Okay guys, I am going to be going over the released final practice test starting with number 15 since that's where we left off in our last class. So I'm going to show you how to do this with Desmos and if you would just go to the Desmos calculator online and I have that already typed in. I've got 9 raised to the negative 3x plus 2 equal to y. That's the left side and then I have the right side y equals 48. So what you want to do is you want to see where these intersect. Now because we have a y value of 48, we're going to change our window. And I'm going to make my y axis, I'm going to make that go from 40 to 60 just so it includes 48. I can also zoom out, but this is just how I am choosing to do that now. What I want to do is I want to move this so I can actually see. And if I look at my window, yeah, I didn't quite hit. 48 but you can move the screen around and if I know that my answer is going to be there and I want to maybe zoom in just a little bit to see that intersection I want to place my um, cursor on it and it's 0 0.079 so if I go back to the problem 0 0.0794 is actually going to be the answer for that one so again that was just typing in the left side as one equation and the right side as y equals 48 and basically looking at the intersection on Desmos. All right, the next one says the graph of the function m of x has a zero at negative one. What are the other zeros? Well, first I'm going to use synthetic and I am going to divide using that negative one zero. So I'm going to write down the coefficients one, three, negative two, negative 4 and then I'm going to use synthetic so I can get a quadratic. Now this should have a remainder of 0 so I bring down the 1 and I multiply by that number in the corner. Then I combine that's a 2. Multiply I get negative 2. Combine I get negative 4. Multiply I get positive 4. So it looks like my quadratic is 1x squared plus 2x minus 4 equals 0. Now this is not factorable. So to get the other zeros, I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. So my a is 1, my b is 2, and my c is negative 4. We've got to be careful with that. So the opposite of b, negative 2, plus or minus the square root of 2 squared is 4, minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Now what happens, in order to evaluate, I have a negative times a negative. So the discriminant is actually going to be 4 plus 16. And that's 2 times, that's a 1. So this is going to give me a value of 20 underneath the radical. Well, I'm going to have to simplify that before I can reduce. So you don't want to cross out those 2's. That would give you the wrong answer. So you want to go ahead and simplify the square root of 20. That is, remember, 4 times 5. And I can call that 2 times the square root of 5. So it's negative 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5 all over 2. Now I can reduce all the outside numbers by 2. So that's going to leave me with negative 1 plus or minus 1 times the square root of 5 all over 1. So clearly the answer has to be this third option. All right, so hopefully that made sense to you. Now, number 17 says, which function does not have a set of all real numbers as its domain? Well, an exponential function, x can be anything. So my domain is all real numbers. Now for this rational function, you cannot have zero under the line. So for this one, x plus 3 cannot equal 0. Well, that means x cannot equal negative 3. Well, anything but negative 3 is not all real numbers. And so this is the one that would not have a domain of all real numbers. Absolute values would and trig functions would. All right, number 18. Now, this is talking about a trapezoid, and it's an isosceles trapezoid. We're going to find the area of an isosceles trapezoid whose bases are 16 and 26 and whose sides are 13. 
Now, in order to get the area of an isosceles trapezoid, we need to know the formula. So it's one half the sum of the bases times the height. So let's see what we have. We have a base of 16 and 26, and our legs are 13, or our sides. Does not give me the height. So we're going to find the height by dropping down a perpendicular segment on each corner here. So that makes it into a rectangle inside a trapezoid. Well, that's going to allow me to determine the height, which is this dotted line. So opposite sides are equal in length. And then if this whole thing is 26, there's 10 left. 10 divided by 2 is 5 and 5. And then this is a 5, 12, 13. So I know the height then must equal 12. So when I want to find the area, I'm just going to plug in my values. One half, the bases would be 16 plus 26 times my height, which is 12. So that's one half of 42 times 12. So that is going to be uh, half of 42 is 21. And it looks like I have 21 times 12 which is 252. So that's 252 square feet. Well, it tells me that each piece of new material has an area of 2.5 square feet. And I want to know how many, um, assuming the pieces can be cut, how many pieces um, does he need? Well, I'm going to take my total area, which I just found, 252 square feet, divide by each of these pieces 2.5 and let's see what that's going to be now I can use a calculator or I could use Desmos to do this really doesn't matter I'm just going to pull up my calculator 252 divided by 2.5 it's a decimal it's 100.8 and so my answer he's got to have at least 101 pieces so that's my answer for number 18 all right, let's take a look at number 19. Now, this one's kind of weird. We've never done one like this. It kind of tells me that we have, um, they selected 75 of the 200 seniors at the school. Now, in order for me to figure out my sample size, N, that's actually the number of seniors I am choosing. So N is going to be equal to that 75. And then it gives me this formula here. And it tells me S is the standard deviation, which is 0.4 in this problem. So in order to get the margin of error, I'm just going to call that M, I'm going to take 2, multiply it by the standard deviation, 0.4, and divide it by the square root of N, which is 75. Now I can do this in Desmos, or I can do it in the calculator. It doesn't really matter. Um, let me see if I can put this one in Desmos. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these away and type it on in. So 2, I could do times the little um, shift 8, and then 0.4 divided by, the square root is going to be SQRT, and then 75. So that's how I do that in Desmond. So I'm getting 0 0.092. So let's go back here and write down. It's about 0 0.092 for the margin of error. So this looks like that would be my um, margin of error. Now, here's the thing. It says select all that are true. So let's see if there's any other statements that would be true. Well, the margin of error is just how much it could waver by. And if, as your sample size increases, the margin of error actually decreases. Because think about it. If you're dividing by a bigger number, this margin of error is going to go down. So if the margin of error would increase to, say, 125 instead of 75, that would decrease my margin of error. So let's see which one says that. Okay, so that would be this option. Margin of error would decrease if the sample size were changed to 125. So because 125 is greater than 75, the margin of error will go down. So that is something we hadn't really learned, but that's how you would do that problem. All right, number 20 wants to know the remainder. Now I can do this with synthetic, or I could just simply plug in negative two. So if I set this equal to zero and solve, I get x is negative two. So you can either plug negative two in for x like this, 
and get negative 8 minus 1, which is negative 9, which is the remainder. Or you could do your synthetic by putting negative 2 in the corner, and then 1, you'd have to do your second degree, linear, and then constant. And then you could do this with synthetic, and whatever goes in that box is the remainder. So let's see if I get the same thing. So I'm going to multiply, combine, multiply, combine, multiply, combine, and yep, I get the same thing. So the easiest way is just to plug in negative 2 for x. All right, 21. Now we never talked about this, but this is basically how you do it. So we're going to do this as the amount of time that they're working joined over a loan. So Martha can paint the room in two hours, and that is a loan. So two goes in the bottom. Jamie can paint the room, same room, six hours by herself. That six goes in the bottom. How long will it take together? We don't know. Join. So we're going to put X and X. Now, because they're completing this one job, we always add these and set them equal to one. So to solve, we're going to multiply everything by the LCD, which is six. We're going to reduce and multiply this out and let's see what that's going to give me so i'm going to get 4x is equal to 6 divided by 4 and that's going to give me 6 over 4 which is 1.5 or 3 over 2. so it's going to take 1.5 hours and i don't think you have to put the units in for that one all right so 22 this is a piecewise function we are going to find the value of h of negative 4 plus 3 times h of negative 2. So first, h of negative 4. So where am I going to plug in negative 4? Well, it's got to be equal to, so that's the top one. Now, I will tell you that this problem actually had a typo. It is missing an x. So that is a typo. So this should be negative 1 half times negative 4 minus 15. And that looks like it's going to be a positive 2 minus 15, which is negative 13. So that's my answer for h of negative 4. Now, for h of negative 2, I am simply going to plug that in. That's bigger than negative 4, so that's going to go in the bottom. So 20 minus 3 times negative 2 squared. So that's 20 minus 3 times positive 4. Well, 20 minus 12 is 8. Now I'm going to plug these in and combine them. So h of negative 4 is negative 13 plus 3 times 8. Negative 13 plus 24 is 11. And that is the answer that you would put in the box. So I am sorry about that typo. I knew about that and forgot to fix it. So let's look at the next one. All right, the next one's giving you a function. What's the distance to the nearest hundred? Uh, between the two zeros that are closest, well, we're going to put this in Desmos. So I want you to go to the Desmos calculator and just type in that cubic polynomial. So let's see if we can do that. Here it is. Now, as soon as you type it in, set it equal to Y, you should be able to see your zeros that I have on my screen. Well, the ones that are closest would be the, let's see, two, negative 2 and 0.25. They're going to be 2.25 units away. 0.25 and 3, that would be 2.75. So definitely the first two on the left are the closest. So the answer for that one is going to be 2.25 because one was negative 2 and the other was 0.25. And if I want the distance, basically it's the absolute value of the difference of these values, which is going to be the absolute value of negative 2.25, which is positive 2.25. All right, let's look at this one. Now, this is a parallelogram. Well, a parallelogram, we have some properties that we have to know that we didn't really talk about. So I'm going to label it M, N, P, T. It's giving me M and it's giving me N. Well, these angles are actually same side interior angles. So they are going to be supplementary. Well, what that means is their measures have a sum of 180. So I'm going to add 6x plus 10 to 5x plus 10.5. And I'm going to set that equal to 180. So let's see what that's going to be when I solve for x. So I'm going to get 11x plus 
20.5 equals 180. Now I am going to use a calculator. So I'm going to subtract 20.5 and divide by 11. Well, when I subtract um, 20.5 from 180, I'm going to get 159.5. When I divide that by 11, let's see what that's going to be. All right, so 159, if it will type, divided by 11 is 14.5. So now it wants to know what is the, um, how many degrees is angle T? Well, I know that X is 14.5. So what I want to do now is I really could do this a couple ways. I want to find N or M and then I can find T. So let's just find M. I think that's probably um, a little bit easier. So I'm going to do 6 times 14.5 plus 10. And I'll just again... Put that in the calculator. So 6 times 14.5 plus 10. That is going to give me 97 degrees. Well, guess what? These angles here, M and T, are also supplementary because they're same side here. So they have to add up to 180. So if I subtract 97 from 180, that'll give me 83 degrees. And that is the answer for number 24. Okay, two functions. What is the y value when they're equal? Definitely want to put this in Desmos. So we're going to go right to the Desmos calculator and we're going to type in our cubic and our absolute value. Now notice how I did this. For the absolute value, I just did ABS and that automatically gave me the V. Um, I think you could also go in here under functions and you could go under, um, let me see where it is. Oh, no, you could do it right here. So this is also the absolute value with the bars, but I just did the ABS and it worked. Now, I didn't even set these equal to Y, but I could have. If I want to see where they're equal, I simply look at the intersection, and it wants the Y value. So negative 1.75, that is going to be my answer, negative 1.75. So again, this was simply done on Desmos. I just typed in each of these and looked at the intersection, the Y value. All right, last one. Now this one actually gives you Desmos directly in Canvas. So you could type in this as one function and then this one as the other. Just set them equal to Y. I think that's the best way to do it, especially when you have a constant. And then they just want to know um, what the answer is going to be for um, X. So let's see if I could just put that in Desmos. All right, so I have the left side. I didn't set that equal to Y, but you definitely want to set the 15 equal to Y. Now, when I clicked on where these intersected, I had to zoom out a little bit. Um, that gave me 2.49. And so that is the answer for X for that problem. So I'm just going to write in the answer 2.49. They wanted 100. And that is your solution to that system. Um, so that's it. So hopefully this helped you come up with these released um, answers. And you guys should be able to work on the last review, which is review three on Canvas. And hopefully if you um, are not able to do that, you can email me with your questions. Thank you for tuning in.